Hello, my name is Charlie Dark. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Sphinx in Minecraft. Let's get started. Yes, that's right. I have finally finished it. You will now be able to build the Sphinx in Minecraft to go along with the other Egyptian stuff I built. If you build some of the large pyramids and everything, this will fit just fine into all of that. Uh, there is a large temple coming in the future that's quite, quite a bit bigger than this thing. Uh, but for today, we're going to be focusing on the, the statue itself. You know, as you know, the Sphinx, head of a man, body of a lion. Uh, and I have uh, made a few changes. It's mostly on the interior, though. I've just, I've added an interior to the statue, you know, just, just for fun. Uh, but the rest of it's pretty faithful to what the Sphinx uh, would have looked like uh, in its original form. We've got the beard restored and everything. The nose is back on. The, the, the Nemesis headdress and everything is there, too. Um, so let's get a good side view of it here. I have corrected some of the proportions a little bit. The, the head is more in scale to the body and the arms is a little bit uh, less drawn out than the Sphinx is, but otherwise it's pretty faithful. Uh, but as you can see here, we are going to have an awful lot of block counting to do because it, once we get above the base here, there are no straight lines in the statue. Uh, um, it's almost symmetrical, except for the back here. We have the tail of the Sphinx right here, just, you know, wrapping around there. Elegantly perched on the back there. So we are going to have to do more than a little bit more than half the, the statue, usually. I think once we get to pretty much that point here, uh, everything is symmetrical. But for the back, the tail is the, the, the main consideration for that, so this is for sure a three-part series, I would think. I uh, have done a, quite a lot of uh, sculpting and re-sculpting over, well, I guess I've been working on this uh, on the side, off and on, for over a year or so. To, to get everything, you know, just right. We did start with an original uh, 3D model, uh, but uh, there's been an awful lot I've had to change on that, you know. When you start with that, it's just, it, it'll maybe do half the work for you, but it's not all the all the work and everything. I've added, of course, the, the decorative bangles and everything down here to uh, match the rest of the statue and everything, just to, just to dress it up a little bit. Of course, at the top here, we do have you know, a closer view in of the face. We do have some uh, some ominous glowstone glowing eyes, which will, you know, look, uh, look just a, a little bit uh, scary at nighttime, maybe. And up here, of course, we do have the uh, the Uraeus, the snake up here on top of the Nemesis headdress and everything, with uh, its glowing eyes as well to uh, match the rest of the statue and everything. If we get a little bit of distance from it, we can kind of see the general face of the shape. Um, face of the... what? We can kind of see the general shape of the face, just like so here. I think uh, you can you can kind of see you know the, the the hint of the mouth and everything. I tried to do the the outline of the uh, eye makeup. Uh, the Egyptians would always wear it too. So now that we've seen the exterior, let's take a look inside the ominous door behind me here. Now on the original Sphinx, there would have been a built-in temple between the paws here, but I have added a door and an interior because well you know th this is Minecraft. We want to have a little fun with it. And we can do that, so if we go inside the doors, we can see that we are greeted with a corbel chamber here. And the same design, really, as you would find inside of the uh, pyramids of uh, Sneferu, actually. The, 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 the Maidun Pyramid and the Red Pyramid and, and the other pyramids. And we do have a bit of hidden lighting in the wall here. Just beyond view, we have some glowstone hidden down in these little recesses. And uh, this is designed to be the, uh, the the palace facade design that's common on Egyptian structures. Of course, we do have a, a fire brazier here as well. Uh, you can convert those to, to campfires if you want to. And ahead of us here, we can see another door, which of course leads to a second chamber. I'm included in the Sphinx. This one is a larger chamber, and oh, what do we have back here? Let's take a look at that. We've got some books and an ender chest. Hmm. Wait, you're not supposed to know that those exist. 
And also ahead of us, we see another door, which takes us to, of course, a second chamber. This one is a bit larger than the first one, but done in the same style. It's got, uh, it's got a lot of space around here inside the body of the Sphinx. If you want to perhaps add some redstone or something, you're definitely going to have to add the redstone for the doors there. They're just standard three by three doors, but if you want to, you can modify the design and make it a bit different. There's enough space for you to be able to do that if you want to add something like a key card system or something like that. Uh, I know for a fact, though, this this is just the old Etho door design. It does not work on Bedrock because, you know, well, you know, bed, Bedrock Redstone. I, I don't know how it works. Uh, but it doesn't work for that. It, it ought to work on Java still. But uh, anyway, I have actually removed the door from the rest of the tutorial. You will have to find that from some other channel. I'm sure there's a ton of tutorials out there with redstone doors and everything in them. But yeah, back here. So you have a little niche if you want to perhaps put down an ender chest or something like that to keep all of your valuables in and, and whatnot back here. Or you could uh, conversely integrate this. It's got enough um, obsidian around here if you wanted to bridge that over. You could just straight make it, uh, and these two blocks down here, you could uh, make it your nether portal or something too. Be pretty neat, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the interior. So... Let's uh, exit our Sphinx. As you can see, it's it's a, a large statue, and it's also got a generous amount of space here on the interior. Uh, but I don't think I've even used half the space. I mean, I've used a lot of the uh, space in the body of the Sphinx, but if you want to add other spaces, uh, you can. There's, of course, uh, space underneath the paws here. And uh, I think there's uh, quite a lot of space in the head, too. I've just made that solid. But yeah, the I, I didn't do a cutaway view. But the rooms we just took a look at, we've got that one room here. And then the larger room back here. We'll be able to see that back over here. If I just skip ahead a bit to uh, when we're going to start the tutorial here in a minute. So we can see, you know, we've got the outline of the Sphinx here. You can see the paws and everything. And you can see the rooms in here as well. Uh, these little sections right here, these are where the, the redstone doors would be fitted into the design. Uh, but yeah, on the side here, like if you want to have a sorting system or other things back here, you can fit more things around the room um, if you want to perhaps make it, uh, make it your base or, or something more useful. I would leave it up to you to decide exactly how you want to uh, place and use your Great Sphinx for whatever function you want to. Uh, but I think uh, with all that exposition out of the way, we may as well begin the tutorial. You have seen the d uh, dimensions and materials list, but just to refresh your memory, uh, the first thing we want to do is lay down a big rectangle of 59 blocks wide by 159 long. Uh, that's just how it worked out, actually. F 59 by 159. I didn't do that on purpose. Uh, but yeah, we will uh, want to uh, take cobbled deep slate and go for 59 blocks this way across the front and then 159 blocks all the way to the back here you want to make a big rectangle on that it's, it's filled with uh, filler blocks and everything too uh, but yeah that's going to be the first phase I would recommend that you count that number three times because you know as you can see behind me here this is li this is a very literal foundational phase of our sphinx so we want to make sure we don't get any of the measurements wrong because that will uh, that that will mess us up going forward. All right, so that's a pretty easy first phase. It's a very big first phase, but uh, easy because it's just a big rectangle. Uh, assuming you got your numbers right, what you want to do after that is place down a big rectangle of obsidian blocks or blackstone. Doesn't have to be obsidian. It can be it can be any type of uh, black block that you want to have. Um, uh, I think blackstone would make a good substitution. I know obsidian can be a little expensive for things like this. And you want to extend that up for two blocks. So you want to make a rectangle out of obsidian and or blackstone, two blocks tall, same dimensions, right on top of the cobbled deep slate that you already laid down. All right, so after that, we then want to go on to our fourth phase here. And you want to put down another rectangle of cobbled deep slate, just like you did for the first one up here for the fourth block level. And then behind that, we can start filling in all the rest of the blocks. Uh, so this phase here, this is another very important foundational phase. So I'm gonna have to go really slow and start counting uh, a lot of numbers out, I think. 
going to be a lot of counting in this. I am going to say up front, if we have blocks that are anywhere from one to three or four, maybe even five, definitely four uh, blocks and, and width, uh, I'm not going to count those. I'm just because I've got behind me here, you can see these uh, these little filler blocks that I've I ripped this texture off the lodestone, actually, because it's it's really easy to see uh, what the, what the numbering is for this stuff right here. But when it comes to this stuff over here, you know, for, for things longer than three, four, five, I'm going to count those blocks out. Uh, but otherwise, the small stuff is designed for you to just look at it and, and build it as, uh, as it's shown. Uh, so, now we do have, uh, depending on where you build this, actually, you, um, uh, depending on the landscape, because it is quite big, and you probably don't have a flat space just for that, so I assume there's going to be some sand, possibly, you know, piled up, piled up here at the front, giving you, uh, easy access, but if it's not, then what you can do here is you can, uh, knock these blocks back a bit, and where I'm placing down the red here, you can make that uh, into obsidian. And then you can, you know, just build yourself some little integrated stairs there if you're starting down here at this block level. Um, but yeah, that's just, that's just a little minor thing. Uh, so let's see, let me just kind of restore that a bit. Uh, so pretend that uh, this is what, uh, whatever it was when it started with all obsidian, and we want that to be five blocks wide. Now this here is going to be right along the center line of the build, and as I said, the uh, the statue is symmetrical until we get to about the midpoint of the body, uh, and that's when it becomes asymmetrical only because of the tail that we looked at. All the rest of the head and everything is going to be uh, straight symmetrical, uh, but we want to know where our center line is going to be, so, and that is going to be, uh, we should count that out, actually. Make sure we got that. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And the 30th block right here is the center line. And then you want to count back, back over here all the way to the edge, another 29 blocks. 29 there, 29 there, and 30 right in the middle is going to be our center line. All right. Uh, so, and then you've already laid down this edge of cobbled deep slate, like I said. So here is the next series of blocks. Uh, all the rest of these here, uh, these are just filler blocks. You do not have to place these. These are just here to help you uh, uh, count things out as we go to serve as a double check on uh, everything. All right, so we're going to start, uh, we're going to try to start at the center, and then we're going to work our way around. Uh, we then want to run for what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then two, and then here just straight all the way to the corner, and then just turn and extend the cobble deep slate. Right here, I think this actually you extend the cobble deep slate all the way back until we get to uh, round here. So where is a good place to count that from? Hmm. I think actually, I think actually we should start counting out. Hmm. You know, looking at this phase, I think it'll be easier if actually we go to this phase and we do the counting here, because all that, that's just that's just filler blocks, really, and the floors. I think it'll be easier if we do that phase and this one together, but we do it really, really slowly, counting everything out very slowly. Uh, so right here along our center line, we've then got two blocks on either side of that. Then we've got this run of cobbled deep slate right here two blocks, and then we want to run that out for, what, one, two, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-four, seven, nine, thirty, thirty-three, thirty-six, uh, what, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two blocks. All right, and then let's build a little bit of the door here. First, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at the exterior, 
of the Sphinx first, and then we'll double back at the end here and add that interior. All right, and then we've got uh, three blocks of obsidian right here, and then three blocks for the door, and then another three blocks of obsidian, and then from here, just run the cobbled deep slate out for one, two, three, four blocks, and then we want to do double thickness, and then run that back all the way back to the front here to establish that, okay? All right, and then from here, now let's start building the lowermost for uh, the first slice of the paws. We want to go back for three blocks and then add a, a granite. And then we skip for what? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one granite. Three, one, two, three, four, five. And then, uh, uh, what? Just zoom out a bit. Uh, so build these blocks here for the bangle. Uh, and uh, down here for the the floor, that's just all straight cobble deep slate right there. All right. So build that out in, in the the the, the uh, what the two one two 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 one and two, and then we've got one two three four five six seven, and then turn the corner for one two three, and uh, then uh, that's it I think. You should already have all that established, so let's come back here to the front. And now you want to place down the uh, front paw of the Sphinx as is shown right here in these, you know, the, these ones and twos of blocks. All right, and then from here, everything is going to be pretty much flat and open on the sides. So if you want to go ahead and extend back the cobbled deep slate just all the way back, uh, you can do it underneath the, uh, the, the the back paw there too. It doesn't have to be uh, doesn't have to stop there. Um, but from here, which uh, this uh, is going to be what one two three one two three four five, and then we want to count for one two three four five six nine. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 blocks. And then here we have the other side of the bangle. And that is that is right straight directly across from the one you already placed. Same numbering, same blocks, everything. Okay. All right. And then we want to extend out this granite here for one, two, three, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. 12, 15, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 blocks. And then you want to go for 2, 2, and 3. And then a straight run of a long run of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 20, uh, 26, 27, 28, 29 blocks. And then this is a four here. And then a straight run of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh, whoop, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 blocks. And turn here, and now we've got the back paw of the Sphinx with its associated uh, claws and everything. So you want to build that out according to this pattern here. I'll place a little wool down on top of the obsidian claws here. So you can see that a bit easier. It blends in with the floor a little bit too much there. All right, and then turn the corner and right along the edge here, you want to run for one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 blocks. And then that's a four, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, four, four, three, four, what, five, and then uh, one, one, another one, two, three, four, and uh, turn the corner. Go for two, one, one, three, one, three, four, and then a straight run of one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
And then that one's five, four, four, one, four, two, three, three, four, five, five, three, and then what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, four, uh, what? One, and let me go ahead and place down red on top of the, the claws here, give you a top down view of that. It'll be the same as the other one, I think. And then we want to do a, uh, a uh, quick run of, uh, we can see here, I have uh, this back chamber here. Part of the wall is very closely fitted to the exterior. But back here in the hindquarters, you are going to have quite a lot of space left over for things. Uh, so we, then we want to do a straight run of 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 blocks. I'm placing the torches here and everything so you can you can double check and with the with the uh, uh, filler blocks behind that so you can triple check the measurements I've given sometimes I will be off by one you know n n not not on purpose I just you know I occasionally make mistakes because there's a lot of counting involved here I'm gonna I'm gonna mess one number up probably um let me see the sphinx from a distance a couple more phases though we're probably gonna see that again until we get to the end. Uh, let's see. Then we got a straight run of one, two, three, five, six, nine, and twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine blocks. Turn and go for three, two, two, and then one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, fifteen, fifteen. 18, 15, yeah, 20, 21, 20, 20, 20, 24 blocks. I also like to count in threes because it's just it's easier to keep track of. Uh, and then here uh, you want to mirror the bangle that, you, that we did over there. You can see all these are just in a straight line from each other. It's the same numbering and everything you've already done. And then from here you want to go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 8, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17 blocks, I think. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, yeah, 17. And then here again, you want to do the, uh, the, the front paw, just like so. All those ones and twos. And then on the side here, uh, we, we've already covered actually up to this point here, so you should have all that built. So let me yeah, let's get a top-down view of what we've done so far. It's quite a lot. We'll take a look at the interior in a moment. Uh, but we should have now this pattern established out, all numbered out, and everything correctly. Uh, you can see behind that there the the uh, exterior flooring is just made out of straight obsidian or blackstone. You know whichever block you're using. Uh, but if you're using the obsidian, actually you. Um, I don't think anything's going to spawn on that. Like, Obsidian's a non-spawning block, right? So, uh, it would save you from having to do torches and everything out there for lighting. But I will leave that up to you. Obsidian can be a little annoying to farm this much of. All right, so now back here. Uh, this, as I said, is the piston doorway. We can see I have left in these uh, uh, pressure uh, plates here so you can see where to put them in the design uh, but as I said of course the piston door redstone mechanics itself are not included in the tutorial I'm doing uh, because you know redstone's not, not not my strong suit even if and even if I did show this to you uh, I know for a fact the door design the redstone doesn't work on bedrock so there there's no point in including that since it won't be able to help half the people uh, but if you have, you know, like your favorite piston door design or something, you have ample space, you can see, on the, on the left and the right, the top and the bottom, to fit in uh, that door. You can even des uh, redesign the space just a little bit. If you want to fit in a larger door, you can do that too. All right, now let's take a look at the interior. Uh, the interior, by the way, both these rooms are actually uh, symmetrical to each other. So uh, what that means is if you extend the center line straight through the body of the Sphinx, you can see here what we're building on the left side is a mirror image, identical numbering on the right side. Okay, 
Uh, so to save a little bit of time in the tutorial for the rooms, we're only going to take a look at, uh, I think, the left side. All right, so we've got two blocks of obsidian here. And then for the wall, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, sixteen blocks of obsidian. And in between that, we can see we've got the floor of the cobbled deep slate and these uh, three by three obsidian uh, squares incised into those for just a hint of a pattern. And then turn the corner and run for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. And behind this here, we have uh, the hidden lighting with the palace facade design, just like so. You can just put the design here and then go ahead and inset the glowstone into the floor one block down inside of here. All right, and you can see there's just a repeating pattern on the wall. So let's do the wall first, well, then we'll take a look at the, the floor. So for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15 blocks. And you can see the uh, wall facade design behind that here. It's like so. Granite, cobble deep slate, and glowstone. And then turn the corner and go for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 blocks. And place this behind it uh, right here, just like so. And then turn and go for what? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then two, three blocks for the door. And then all of this over here is going to be a mirror image, like I said, of what we built uh, over there. Uh, now for a little hallway here, you can see we've got, um, I don't think you're having trouble measuring that out, just three by three on cobbled deep slate and the rest of the uh, floor design once you've established the walls all you have to do is make a big rectangle of cobbled deep slate and then a smaller rectangle of obsidian and then a two block thick rectangle of cobbled deep slate and then fill the entire thing in in the middle there with obsidian and or blackstone and if you want to add in these little fire pots here you can see they are just three uh, well four blocks of obsidian and one block here in uh, here uh, in, in here of netherrack uh, now, there's nothing flammable inside the Sphinx, so you can use another rack in here safely. Uh, but if you want to, you can also use campfires instead if you prefer the smoke particles. I'm not partial to the smoke particles myself. And then you want to make, you know, one just right across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks away. Same design right there. All right, so let me zoom out so we can see everything that we just talked about for the first room. And now let's scoot on over and talk about the bigger room that we are going to have back here. Let's take a look at the top down of that first. And now let's go back to our inner door here and uh, do the numbering. So we're going to have two and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Turn the corner, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now the detailing back here for the palace facade. Then one, two, three, four, five, six. 8, 9, 12, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21, 24, 25, 26, 27 blocks. And do the same facade design behind that incised into the wall. And back here again, go for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Turn the corner for 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then for the, the two here and everything from here on out is the same numbering we just did, except, you know, you're just doing it over there. Uh, all right, so uh, that's all the numbering you, you really need. Now let's take a look at the floor design. So if you go around and build the entire wall first, the floor design, as you can see here, is the same pattern we just did. You want to do a rectangle of a couple of deep slate, then a rectangle uh, inside that of obsidian, another two block thick rectangle of cobble deep slate, another one block thick of obsidian, another one block of cobble deep slate, and then fill the entire room uh, in, in the middle there with whatever's left over with uh, the obsidian and or blackstone. Uh, and then back here, if we are, if we draw a little line along our center line here for a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks, so uh, five, no, four blocks on either side of that is where you have the numbering for the placement for your fire pots. And if you want to, you can place more fire pots and everything. 
Uh, I think you, you will probably want to. Um, the uh, uh, I'm not sure if the hidden lighting in the walls here is enough to stop all the spawns. There, there may be, you know, there may be kind of a dark patch along here where something might spawn. So you do, you know, if you're building this in survival, you do want to, to, to add, maybe add a little bit more lighting than what I have included in the default model here. All right, so we have um, spent quite a lot of time talking about that phase because it was really, really important. Everything here is foundational. We kind of had to do two, I think doing this two levels at once made the most sense for that instead of trying to do uh, with, with all those filler blocks and everything. I think this made more sense to do it this way. Uh, but now that we've done that, what we're going to be doing for the rest of the uh, the monument here is going up another one block level at a time. And uh, where should we start for that? I think actually the best place to start is going to be right here at the front door. Uh, so right here. So you, you you know where you know where that is. So on top of that, you want to place down your obsidian um, uh, granite. Sorry, you want to place down your granite just like so, and then three blocks of obsidian, and then what? One, two, three, four. In the corner, one, two, three, four, and then what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Extend up the bangle design another block level. Then one, two, three, four, five, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You want to extend up the uh, the claw design just like so. On these first uh, couple of phases, uh, a lot of things are going to be going up vertically. Like here at the side here, you can see we don't have to count that. You just need to extend that up another block level. Extend up the bangle another block level and extend uh, this entire section up for a second block level. Back here at the back, you can see you placed all this already, so we're just stacking it up. One additional block of granite, like so. Uh, and except for that there. So we want to count from here. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, and then go for five. And then one, two, three, Five, six, seven, eight blocks there. These these uh, hang over blocks there, and then what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got overhanging blocks now, and then a straight run of one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, what, thirteen, fourteen blocks, and then extend up the claws just like so, just straight up. Right there. Extend all this granite up. No need to count it if we've already placed it. If it's just going up one block level. Uh, we do have one overhanging block here. There. And here. Two right there. One here. And then these are going straight up here. Still going straight up. Just right on top of what you've already placed. All right, we've got one overhanging block here, there, here, and there, and there, and here. Two blocks there, two blocks here. And then that's all on top of itself. We've got one, two, three, four, five right there. And then we've got the uh, the paw going straight up here. And then what? One, two, three, five, six, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, and twelve, thirteen, fourteen blocks. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five. And two, three, four, five, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, 
18. And these right here are all on top of each other. Like so. Here we have the bangle design again, just uh, right on top, which you've already placed. And then all that's right on top of itself, too. We're now back to the, the right front paw. Like so. All of that there, right on top of everything. And this brings us uh, right back to the door where we started. Uh, whereupon it's now time to take a look at the interior. All right, so other side of the door here, two, two, five, two, five, um, three, but a, a corner, and extend up the uh, the palace facade design on the interior, same block, straight up, two blocks for the corner, and extend this design up, like so, two blocks for the corner, the wall design, Three blocks there, five blocks here, one, two, and we've got our uh, our uh, second door here. And then from here, you know, like I've said, the, the numbering for that side of the room is just the exact same as for this side of the room here. Okay? All right. Uh, okay, uh, second chamber, two, one, Five, three, turn the corner. Wall design, two in the corner, repeating wall design here. Two in the corner, wall design again. Three in the corner, then one, then three, four, five, and then from here all the numbering is the same again. All right, so there's your uh, second chambered interior room. And like I said, there is there is more space if you wanted to. You could perhaps uh, there there um, there wasn't really enough space in the corner here. But if you wanted to, you could maybe make a uh, a a cross intersection here, and maybe you could work in some smaller chambers into the pause if you wanted to. There, as I said, there is there is uh, more space available inside the monument than what I made use of. We just got a very simple two chamber design here. No need to, no need to really overcomplicate it. Because, you know, the, the Sphinx doesn't actually have these, these chambers inside of it. We, we're just adding these for fun. All right. And for t -t 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 today, I think we're going to do another phase. Um, quite a lot of numbering. I think this is, this is for sure a three-parter, if not more than that. But we'll have to see just how much it's going to be. We, we're just, we have an awful lot of counting to do. That's what's... Uh, so here, let's just uh, get to the top of the door. Just like so here. Three across the door. And then uh, three here. And then two. And then four there. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Extend up ba the bangle straight up. Extend uh, all this granite here straight up as well for the paws. Straight up just like so. Still straight up for the claws at the front. Straight up alongside here. Straight up for the bangle. But then we do have one block here. Cut out, otherwise that's going to be uh, straight until we get all the way back here where we've got one block hanging over here. And as we go, uh, do remember to use what we've already built as a reference for uh, what to place next. Got one block there. Overhang. And then from here, we've got what? 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13 blocks. And 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15. And then 5 here. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Turn the corner here, cobble deep slate and granite in these numbers. A granite on the side here going straight up. 
except for this block right down there. Leave the cutout for that one. And five, then one, two, three, six, seven, eight. And then five, three, two, three, four, five, six. And then uh, what? Uh, okay. So you do want to build all this extra granite here. Remember, all these filler blocks back here are interior blocks. Uh, but uh, this portion here is going to be a little bit different because this is where our tail of our Sphinx starts and first starts, you know, flaring out and curling up over the uh, the right uh, rear la leg there. So we want to build all of this here for uh, three by three right there and then two by two and then one, one, two, three, one, two, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, three, one, two, three, four, four, four again, three, one, one, two, three, four, and then two, 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 three, uh, two by three, one, two, three, two, three, four, and one, two, three, then what? Uh, two by five, then three, one, two, three, four, five, and then four, one, three, three, but cornered, two, three, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and then what? One, two, three, uh, what? That's uh, seven, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then here's the uh, the detailing for the claw. All right, and then uh, one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Five, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, twelve, fifteen blocks. And then one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And then four. One, one, and then one, two, three, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty four blocks, and then one here, and then extend up the bangle design just straight up, and then same deal for the granite and the front paw. That's just all oh, that's all still going straight up. They're all the way straight up. Same deal for the door design on both sides. And that'll lead us right back here where we started. So we'll now go inside, take a look at the interior numbering. And most of this is going straight up except for the wall design. You've got two, one, and two there. Just set back one of the granite blocks inside the little hallway. And then the, the design for the interior walls is just the same. All this is being extended straight up. All the granite, the obsidian, the cobble deep slate extend up by one more block level. It's right on top of what you've already built. Right there. So there's the interior door design. That's the first room. Uh, if you want to, you can, of course, go ahead and finish off your little fire pots here. Uh, you don't have to put these in. They're just optional. You can... Remove those or put in uh, new fire pots of your own design, whatever you want to do. It is your monument now, after all. Uh, so uh, we want to do uh, extend everything up here, just like is shown. Same deal for the wall design for the second chamber. Just right on top of what you've already placed down under the block level. Really easy. Just leave a little three block cutout for this little uh, vestibule uh, here at the back. Well, no, I guess it's more of a niche. 
and we'll add a little wall on the edge. Uh, a vestibule would be a chamber all the way there at the front. So we're all the way here at the back, so it's definitely a wall niche. A good place if you want to install a sarcophagus or something. In here, perhaps uh, perhaps I will do a tutorial on a, an Egyptian style sarcophagus that you can that you will be able to fit right here. Hint hint. Uh, it, it's not included. It's not out yet, but uh, in the in the future it'll it'll be out. I've already made the design. I just haven't done the the little video on it yet. It's it's in the list things to do. Uh, so yes, so um, get a little altitude. So that's going to be your the next level of your interior chambers, the first and second chambers. But I'm afraid that's all the counting that I'm going to be able to do for today. Remember, the entire world and everything is available for download in the video description for both Java and Bedrock versions. If you just want to download everything. But in the meantime, I hope you are having a lot of fun building your Sphinx. And I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.